Um, I can't wait for you to learn more about the all exciting opportunities going on in the social science divisions at DKU. And I'm delighted to introduce our DKU faculty today, Professor Keeping Wu. She's an associate professor of anthropology at Duke Kingshan University. She's also the division chair of social sciences um, for our undergraduate program. So we're really lucky to have her today. I'm just going to pass it over to her for her to start her presentation. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Can you hear me fine? If so, I'm going to share my screen. Welcome, everybody. Uh, I am here today representing the Social Science Division uh, at Duke Kwanshan University. I'm very glad that uh, you guys are, all have an interest in the social sciences. And um, well, we, uh, the, we Duke Kwanshan University don't have departments. So you probably already know that. We have three divisions, divisions of social sciences, division of natural sciences, and division of uh, uh, arts and humanities. So now I'm going to give you an overview. But because our divisions uh, overlap with each other a lot in terms of major uh, setup and structure, you're also going to hear about some other divisions in this presentation. Um, you. Uh, let me let me just put this uh, ahead first. So throughout your uh, my talk, if there's anything that I wasn't clear, you can feel free to interrupt me and just uh, say, you know, let me repeat something. So I'll be happy to uh, answer any questions uh, when necessary. Let me. Um... OK, so the social science divisions, um, this is the whole all the DKU majors There's a big pizza <laughs> and the social sciences are around here. But you can say these are the majors that we have. See, so only two majors sit squarely in the social sciences. We have four majors that actually cut across natural sciences and social sciences. Those are environmental science, global health, behavioral science, computation, and design majors. And then we have uh, six other majors who overlap with arts and humanities. And these are cultures and movements, ethics and leadership, global China studies, US studies, media arts, and computation design. You, you can see the computation design appear twice because that's a major that cut across all three divisions. So that's how interdisciplinary our university is. And in here in the middle, you can see some of the social science disciplines. And you can tell already from the title of these majors, these, these are not just disciplines, right? These are phrases, <laughs> majors that include several tracks. Each track is composed of several disciplines. And here are some of the disciplines that are being represented here. Now, next slide. And the social science division, of course, we study uh, society scientifically. This is, you know, the social science, right? So we, we have an interface, as I, I've already said, um, of natural sciences and the arts and humanities. But here is the place where we study um, the encounters between different cultural worlds and histories. So in the social science, uh, in the majors that include social sciences, you'll be expected to learn about all kinds of world cultures and societies that exist in today's world or the past. And also, we use a variety of uh, methodologies. We teach these hardcore methods in social sciences. Um, we use quantitative methods, qualitative methods. I think you probably have an idea what they are, but if you don't, let me know and I can um, explain further. So, for instance, I'm an anthropologist. For anthropology, we use mainly qualitative methods, and that includes uh, ethnographic research, field work, interviews, um, things like that. Quantitative methods that are used by social scientists include probably like surveys, statistics, and nowadays increasingly so computational methods. And we also use comparative methods. You know, we have professors who major in, who does China and Africa comparisons or different kind of Southeast Asian country comparisons or China, Japan comparisons. And I myself have done research in China and the U US. So I do religious comparisons. And another kind of a, a methodology people, the faculty members in social sciences use are big data, which is uh, quite popular right now. It overlaps with computational methods. And uh, more and more faculty members are actually using machine learning and AI and all those relevant methodologies to deal with social scientific questions. 
And lastly, not the least, we use uh, experimental methods. This is very popular among behavioral scientists. Sometimes they conduct, you know, uh, behavioral scientists include both psychologists and behavioral economic, economists who they conduct uh, experiments to understand human motives in doing certain things. Now, these are the disciplines that are represented here, uh, as I have briefly mentioned in the previous pizza pie, you know, uh, we have public policy, uh, political science, economics, anthropology, and sociology. These are the disciplines that are represented in all these majors. So for instance, public policy is represented in six majors in uh, in the social science that cut across environmental science, cut across social science and natural sciences. Global health is the same. So public policy is represented in six different majors. Political science is represented in four different majors. Economics is represented in three different majors. Anthropology is represented in one and sociology is in one. What does it mean? It means that if you major in, uh, for instance, political economy, Right under political economy, you also have several tracks to choose from. You can choose the track of public policy, or you can choose the track of economics, or you can choose the track of political science. Now, let's go through them one by one. In cultures and movements, this is a big major. Under cultures and movements, we have three tracks, and you can see the tracks are more disciplinary based. But it does not mean that if you take, for instance, anthropology made a track under cultures and movements, you only take anthropology classes. No, you take a set of interdisciplinary uh, uh, courses that are shared by all three tracks in the cultures and movements uh, major. And then you take disciplinary courses that are under anthropology or sociology or world history. So let's see a different major, ethics and leadership, that actually cuts across three different majors, philosophy, religious studies, and public policy, and uh, three different tracks. These tracks are the same. You know, if you are an ethics leadership major uh, with a philosophy track, you would take a set of classes that are shared by ethics and leadership majors, students, all three tracks. And then you take a particular type of disciplinary classes that are under philosophy major. This is a major called institutions and governance. And under that major, we have economics, political science, and public policy, three different kind of tracks. So whenever a track is the same, you take more or less the similar track uh, disciplinary courses. For instance, if you are economics major in institutions and governance, and the other person is an economics major in political economy, you would take similar disciplinary courses under economics, but different interdisciplinary courses for different majors. Does that make sense? It sounds a little bit confusing, but it's actually pretty straightforward. So now this is political economy, right? You have economics as well, but you take slightly different classes with the institutions and governance economics track. Um, under political economy, you have economics, political science, and public policy. Um, <clears throat> And then, of course, we have U.S. studies because U.S. Uh, international students from U.S. is almost half of our international students' body. Um, under U.S. studies, it's a it's a major that cut across both social sciences and arts and humanities. We have political science and public policy. These two tracks are more social science. And then we have American history and American literature, and those two majors are more uh, arts and humanities. So they will be taught by professors from arts and humanities more. Global health is a, is a major that cuts across, public, you know, has two tracks, public policy, which is a social science track, and a biology track, which is a natural science track. So now let's take a glimpse of um, what the classrooms look like. So in DKU classrooms, because we have very small classes, most of the classes are about 18 students max, and, and I think some students classes can run out about, about 20 to 24. But um, the classes are very small, and you're not expected to just sit there and listen to lectures because they're also very long. They're about two and a half hours uh, for each class. And in those classes, you'll be expected to do a lot of class activities. 
So you'll be asked to do presentations. Uh, you'll be asked to do uh, demonstrations. You'll be asked to do some teamwork. And sometimes in this picture, you cannot see very well. It's actually a bunch of guest lecturers that have been invited by the professors to come to give lectures in the classrooms. For instance, I teach a class on cultures and social movements. And in that class, I not only invite guest lecturers you know, of academic background, sometimes I invite activists from the field to talk about their experience actually doing culture and social movements. So these will be what you these will be um, what you have, have uh, in the classrooms, and of course our learning does not stop inside the classrooms. A lot of the um, uh, a lot of the classes have a few trips. Uh, <clears throat> designed and we have actually Friday is devoted you probably know this already uh, Fridays we have no classes and uh, um, it's devoted to field trips for different classes to organize field trips and this is a picture of I think undergraduate studies uh, students going to a field trip to I've oh this is uh, the American embassy or the court <laughs> I forgot, it looks like the court. And this is a, a student debate um, <clears throat> a series organized by a, a class, actually started with a class. So, and students are also encouraged to go to conferences and especially when they are doing research with uh, professors. Uh, as a student researchers, we have a very active student researcher group. And um, a lot of times they get the chance to collaborate with uh, professors uh, to work on their projects and, um, uh, present on, in conferences. I myself is has collaborated with a student of mine who we have presented together in an international conference, and now um, our paper is going to be published. We're in the final process right now. So these are opportunities that are rarely available to undergraduate students in other universities, but we have them here um, in the social science division, especially we value uh, undergraduate researchers very much. Okay, here are just sample uh, some examples of the student projects. Uh, these are a little bit uh, small, but you can see this one's about blockchain applications to sustainable fashion. Um, this one is, I think, about multi-species ethnography. You know, the, the ethnography studying not only humans but also different kind of species. This is called Faiths and Fortune. I th I think. Um, I think this is about just science fiction and religion. <laughs> um, so this one <clears throat> is the student that I mentioned. Uh, she did uh, ethnographic field work among the Chinese Association in New Zealand. She recently just graduated, and uh, this is a very uh, good project that she not only did archival work but also, you know, a participant observation of these uh, groups. Um, besides uh, the um, uh, classrooms, of course, we we have, to, we have to think about your futures, like where do you go after you graduate, right? So we have major affairs in which um, you get opportunity to know more about different majors. Oh, this is major affair, not a career affair. So in, in order to know more about major affairs, you will be able to, uh, you have a major affair. And um, in the major affair, you'll meet faculty members who teach in separate ma majors uh, to tell you more about what you would learn in different kind of majors. Um, but not only do we have an annual major fair, we have pro promotional events spread out throughout the year. Uh, for instance, uh, I know that Sociology Club is uh, sponsoring a series of, of events at the end of the semester in May uh, for fresh, you know, freshmen, sophomore students to attend to be able to know more about what, you know, what you learn as a sociologist. Uh, how, do, how does a sociologist conduct research, right? What do other sociology students do? Um, so these kind of, and some of the events will, will contain like uh, public, you know, speakers from outside, or sometimes these they will uh, contain like a movie screening. Uh, you can talk to the movie director or talk to other professors who would comment and discuss the significance of those movies. Um, so look for those events that are hosted by social science divisions throughout the year, so that you can get to know more about it. And e even the social. Uh, the signature work fair is a major channel through which uh, students can get to know what the uh, you know what each major you know, students are doing. Yesterday, I had a student contact me contacting me because she had um, 
been to the signature work, which is the final thesis presentation, and she was fascinated by one of the projects. And then the, the project was done by a, a cultural anthropology student, and my, I was the mentor. And she said, wow, I had no idea this thing existed. So she, she contacted me and wanted to know more about cultural anthropology as a freshman. So this is, you know, there are different channels through which you, you can discover new things. Uh, you never know, you know, if that you will be fascinated by because uh, in high school, you probably had very limited opportunities exploring these um, uh, different kind of uh, uh, social scientific research. Now, career paths. This is where I, I was jumping ahead of myself earlier. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a bit of cold. We, uh, as social science majors, if you graduate, where you know, what do you do with this, with these kind of degrees and these majors, right? Uh, so we can go to public policy organizations. Uh, we have a lot of public policy students, NGOs, um, research institutions. Um, of course, you can also go to consulting companies, government agencies, and different kind of universities. Actually, majority of our social science students are going to uh, postgraduate uh, programs. Um, this year, my students, uh, actually, they've received offers from all over the top schools, Oxford, Cambridge, um, London School of Economics. Um, these are the British ones. And then um, Chicago, Harvard, Columbia, uh, you know, people have difficulty choosing between, well, should I go to Chicago or, or Columbia, you know, <laughs> so, um, but those are, these are, what are the, you know, when you apply for graduate schools, those are more disciplinary based, right, so you go to, you can apply for, these are the disciplines that are oftentimes appear in the social science students' um, graduate school applications, you know, economics, public administration, anthropology, sociology, political science, public health, law sometimes as sometimes they will take a year break before they do go to law public policy psychology and religious studies these are all very common um masters and phd programs actually history is not here but some of the students in the, um, also apply for history um masters and phd programs so that's it that's all my presentation do you have any questions yeah, any any questions about the major setup, you know, the courses you're taking? Um, I think uh, Tekla answered the question about the class size. Yes, the intro classes may be a little bit bigger depending on majors. Like, for instance, intro to psychology, maybe a big class, right? Or intro to economics, Econ 101. But even if they're bigger, uh, they're divided into several sections usually. And uh, the, each section will be no more than 24 students. But um, <clears throat> For upper level classes, like 300 to 400 classes, uh, level classes, the, the number of class size is about, I would say average below 10. Um, what is the difference between the political economy, economics major, and government governance and institution governance, economic paths? Um, so this, there's a slight difference, actually, in terms of the kind of classes that the uh, interdisciplinary classes you are taking under different majors. So, for instance, for political economy, let me pull this up. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, maybe I should I should not just. Um, so for political economy, we will take some classes that are related to, to political science, but in in uh, governance and institution, you will take some classes that are related to philosophy. So these are the, the, the major differences between the two. Um, let me, and then, in, but in terms of disciplinary courses, you take the same thing. So disciplinarily, um, all the economics majors take almost identical classes for disciplinary courses. We had a question from Nicole. Um, are you oh. able to take a minor at DKU? Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm I'm just I missed this one. Okay. Are you taking um are you able to take a minor at DKU? I don't think so. I haven't had this opportunity. I mean, I haven't because the courses are so interdisciplinary, you know, it is it's sort of you always you always have a minor like if you're a political economy and economics major you have a, I would say this equal to an economics major plus a political science minor something like that does that make sense yeah 
Great. And we have a question from Nicholas. In terms of preparedness for future pursuits of an MBA, is political economy with a track in economics sufficient, or should external supplementary courses be taken as well? Um, I think that is sufficient. However, uh, for a lot of MBA as in the US, they require work experience. So it's not just uh, the uh, undergraduate studying experience. So for MBA requirements, sometimes they, you, they don't even need you have an econ background, uh, econ uh, uh, bachelor's degree. However, they require years of, you know, two, at least two years of work experience. But it does not mean that you cannot apply for a master's in a management school. So we have students who successfully apply for uh, the Duke, as, that's how, how, as far as I know, the Duke Management School, they have gotten offers from them um, directly uh, from a, a bachelor, you know, bachelor of economics track with under political economy. Yes, so as a, one new message, what path might you suggest to someone who's primarily interested in uh, behavioral science? So. If you're interested in neuroscience, it's behavioral science major is the major major uh, area that we teach neuroscience, uh, neuroscience, uh, behavioral economics, as well as uh, um, psychology, um, uh, cognitive psychology and social psychology, all kinds. So neuroscience is featured in there. And I think we have also uh, some classes that are interdisciplinary between global health and mental health. Yeah. Are there any environmental science paths with a focus on sustainability? Lots. Which path would be best to take that if? Uh, so the in, you can take, uh, for instance, environmental science, public policy. So under the public policy track in environmental sciences, um, most of our faculty members, they are actually all experts in sustainability. So uh, that would be the ideal place. However, in cultural anthropology, ethics and leadership, a lot of the professors, they are hugely interested in sustainability from different kind of angles, right? Of course, you know, from uh, cultural anthropology, they teach from uh, Anthropocene, you know, multi-species ethnography in ethics and leadership. They teach it more from the ethics, uh, ethical and legal, and also philosophical point of view. Um, but environmental science and public policy is the place where it sits squarely. I think that is there, we have hired several professors who specifically work on sustainability, either for climate or, um, you know, or, or um, uh, sustainability of, you know, that's caused by technology, technolo technological advancement. And uh, we have professors in political science who teach, um, who work on global sustainability from a political science point of view. So we have a ton of, this is one of the trademarks of DKU. I think if you want to study this aspect, DKU is really the best place to be at. And we have a student group. I think called student sustainability group, very active student group, please. <laughs> a lot and of a small plug on environmental sustainability. DK is actually, I believe, the first and only led um, campus in China. So very excited about yes. that, especially as phase two of our campus is opening, which will more than double its size. There's lovely sustainability um, um, aspects to it that have been worked in from the get go. So people who love environmental sustainability will get a really good big kick out of our campus. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. If I would like to be a diplomat, you're not the first one who said that. Uh, you could, which path is preferred for graduate school? Anything. Uh, I mean, you mean like the which for for graduate school admissions into you know political science, uh, international relations, uh, right? So. Uh, we have a lot of uh, classes on international relations under political science uh, uh, tracks in different kind of uh, majors, political economy, uh, institutions and governance, ethics and leadership. They all have political sciences classes, but uh, international, they, all, all of the political science classes would have, a, you know, look for the classes that are related to international relations. I think those are the most relevant, but I think to become a diplomat, mm -hmm. it is very important. You have a very good grasp of 
cultures and histories, you know, world cultures and world histories, right? So uh, I would also recommend classes in uh, his world history, for instance, right? Um, uh, sociology, you know, you have to know how society works and public policy, because all the time you would have to discuss public policy issues. We have a, I've, I've had a student who wanted to become a diplomat and now he's in Harvard Kennedy School, no, he's in Yanjing and, um, uh, Yanjing Institute in Beijing University, and and after that he's going to Harvard Kennedy Business School, uh, Harvard Kennedy School of Government. Government, um, yeah. He rejected Harvard to come to DKU when he was applying for undergraduate studies. Sorry, I'm giving too much information. <laughs> uh, he was wonderful. If we major in institutions and governance or political economy, can we still take history, philosophy, and other humanities courses? Yes, absolutely. Actually, you are required to. Uh, everyone has a, a requirement to take a, a few um, so uh, certain credits of humanities uh, credit, uh, certain credits of quantitative methods, certain cr credits of uh, um, uh, social science uh, uh, credits. So it's all of these. You will be Actually, in the beginning, in in grad, you 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 will have to take a lot of elective classes, right? Mm -hmm. Um, all these electives can be in anything, um, and I would I always encourage my students to take as much um, classes from the out of your comfort zone as comfort zone as possible uh, in the very beginning uh, to understand what you really want to learn, right? Um, yes, it's you, you you can, and also you know you don't necessarily have to do your final year thesis, the signature work in the area of your major. I have, I'm a cultural anthropologist, but I have a lot of, I supervised a lot of students who are in public policy, for instance, because they are interested in ethnographic methods um, to be uh, the signature work um, methodology. So one student worked on uh, environmental NGOs uh, in Tibet, um, so she's comparing, you know, international NGOs and local Tibetan NGOs, but her methodology was she really literally went there and lived there in the villages and talked to these people. So she's a public policy student, but using anthropological methods. And we have a lot of uh, data science students actually doing projects with a historian, professor of historian. So you, even if you major in something, it does not mean that your final year project, your signature work has to be in that particular major or that uh, professor who's in the same discipline. Sometimes you can, um, you know, you, you can pick a, prof you know, an area that you're actually st interested in studying for further in for graduate school to be your, um, you know, the mentor, the discipline or, of your mentor so that you can start preparing for it while um, writing your signature work. And you can use part of your signature work as uh, writing samples when you apply for graduate school, which is done, uh, you know, off quite often, frequently. Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, Anna says that uh, some students who are interested in marine science but major different things. Another student was interested in urban studies under a different major. A absolutely, yes, you can. You can do. And when when you are in DKU, all these different opportunities emerge. Right, and then you were sometimes working with faculty members who who would have a summer project you just happen to be interested in, and that may not be in your major, but you can still work with them as long as you have certain skills that are useful for as a researcher, undergraduate researcher, or you think you can learn some skills from that particular type of uh, um, of a summer program. I've had some of our research teams that composed of a lot of quantitative method, you know, students who were trained in quantitative methods. And I said, why do you want to come work for me? Because I'm a qualitative person. And they say, well, I wanted to do mixed methods in the future. And this is a possibility, opportunity for me to learn about qualitative methods. Yeah. What is the process of potentially changing your major? Like, oh, you can change your major. There is a deadline, though. Um, I forgot when is the deadline, but there is a very clear process of how to change your major. Uh, you declare your major at the end of your second year, sophomore, right? C correct me if I'm wrong. Um, uh, sophomore year, I think you know, the fall semester of your sophomore year, right? You declare your major. Um, and you can still change your major as long as uh, it won't 
delay your graduation, I guess. I mean, you can still delay your graduation, but that's not ideal, right? So if you're changing to a major, for instance, I'm an you know, American literature major, I was, and then I'm going to change to biology, and you in, in the third year, and you discover, oh my God, I haven't taken any of the required classes in biology. <laughs> I have to start from scratch. Then that will prolong, you can still change it, but you will, your, your time will be prolonged. But if you're changing from, you know, political economy, econ track to um, public policy track, maybe you have taken all the ID required courses already. You just need to take a couple more classes, right? So currently I have an advisee who is changing from a, a biology track to public health track, uh, from biology um, major, global health track to biology track to global health track anyway so she has she only needs to take a couple more uh classes uh that are required most of the classes have already been taken and they're overlapping and that is totally fine but you just need to fill out some paperwork and then that can be done does dku have any connections to major development economics research teams or organizations um so dku's Econ professors have very vibrant um, uh, research projects. So I don't know uh, if DKU has any particular connections to uh, to major development research teams, but DKU's econ professors do. So uh, if you have to explore uh, what kind of projects that the econ specific econ professors are doing, first you have to find out. Okay. Whose research area I'm interested in? Take a class with that professor. And then you can ask him, oh, are you involved in any research projects that I can be part of? And this happens quite often. You know, I have students from my class asking me if they want to, if I have a project they can be, they, they can participate in, right? So if you have taken a class with the professor, the professor knows you. And also you have been trained in the particular methodology that is necessary for the professor's project. And that will make, put you in a very, advantageous position to be a part of a research team of the professor. So in econ and data science, they have a lot of develop, develop, you know, econ, economics related projects. Um, furthermore, and UG studies, we just started a community-based learning project. And the community-based learning is trying to collaborate with a lot of local um, businesses, for instance, so that you can integrate um, the uh, uh, the class content, what you're learning in class with uh, specific practices um, in place. You know, you can go to the Kashmir industry, you know, there's in Kunshan, there's a big Kashmir industry, right? And then there's a big uh, uh, crab, uh, you know, water, fish, fishery kind of industry. Those are very ginormous. That's like biggest in the world in the country um we're talking about even though Kunshan is a small town um but those are those places offer a lot of opportunities they welcome students um to do research in those projects in, in you know in their premises and if we can collaborate with some of the professors that will be even better since we can't have a double major at DKU is it possible to major in biology but still study politics oh yes yeah you can study politics but you won't have politics in your um in your uh, degree uh, certificate. You have politics classes in your um, uh, transcript, of course, right? So it's still useful, even when you are applying for graduate school, like for instance, you majored in biology, but you're gonna apply for graduate school, just decided in the fourth year, you're gonna apply for political science, a master's in political science. But it doesn't matter, even if you're majoring biology, you have transcript to prove that you have taken all these political science classes, right? So it's totally fine. And we have three uh, CC classes, common core classes, and most of those common core classes are taught by political philosophers. So I think where there's one CC2 was ethics and something, and it was taught, taught by mostly political philosophers. So you, you be, we have probably the largest team of political philosophers of all the universities um, our size, uh, let's say. Yeah, so you have a lot of chance of learning from political scientists. So Nicole's question, an idea of the structure of the class regarding grading policies. Yes, so the grading policies vary from class to from class to class and in social science classes 
it's very common that we have um, you know papers and written assignments that can be graded and oftentimes the professors will provide a rubric in grading and often you'll be also assessed by a variety of methods right uh, so in my classes for instance we have I have presentations we have uh, weekly reflections and we have a final paper and in some classes they have uh, final exams for econ classes and behavioral science classes for instance it's more common for them to have a final uh, exam examination um but for other kind of social classes Classes, uh, social science classes, it's more likely it's going to be a paper or several papers, several short papers or one big long paper. Um, homework. Um, so you are, like most of the classes, you're uh, expected to do the readings before the class and come to class prepared to talk, <laughs> prepared to discuss. Right. Um, so the the professor usually will give you a set of readings and sometimes uh, videos and you know the, to for you to talk about them, um, to watch, and then you can discuss them in the classrooms. Uh, test schedules. There's a final exam test schedule that will be posted by the registrar every each semester at the beginning of the semester, so you know when the test will be. Um, midterms. Some classes has, has midterms and some classes have a, maybe a midterm paper or midterm presentation. So like I always. Because I know other classes may have midterms, my classes would have a class, a, a presentation that's like the week after midterms, so that, you know, it can be all, you know, um, diverse, diversified. And the weight of participation depends on the class again. Some classes have as high as 20 to 25 percent, some classes have as low as 10 to 15 percent. So some classes have been two midterms. Oh, my goodness. I envy those classes. Because then that means the professor has to grade two exams. It must be a very good class. The professor is very hardworking. <laughs> yeah, but then, you know, so it, it really depends, right? If you have more exams, then that means e the weight of each exam is less. So there is a chance, a, b a bigger chance, actually, you can get a bigger, better grade because you can if you screw up one sort of then you have other places to make it up right it won't hurt your final grade too much if you have fewer exams which looks easier but each exam would have higher weight right on the on the, the whole whole final grade yes all all professors have final uh, office hours and uh, they either have a office hour post on the syllabus uh, or you can make an appointment separately if that doesn't work uh, for for everyone's schedule because you know there are always conflicts. So uh, professors spend a lot of times with a lot of time with our uh, faculty members. Actually, to the degree that some of our students get very un uncomfortable when they go to graduate school and they say, "Why cannot I have as much time with the professors in grad school as I had at DKU?" <laughs> DKU is a special, unique situation. <laughs> Yes, you would have a lot of times, uh, a lot of uh, time interacting with the professors. Thank you for all of your lovely questions uh, and uh, several lovely faces that I can see. And uh, if you have further, further questions, feel free to email me. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.